Ah non, c'est pas grave. convinced me and convinced us in our meetings here that they are sincere about the efforts that they're making to improve things and to uh, deal with human rights violations. But uh, we all know that the appropriations thus far just aren't going to meet the objectives if we're going to save that country. Your support's been very helpful with the critically needed reprogramming, but if we don't get the rest of that money, the 30 million and the 50 million supplemental, I don't think we'll be able to save that, that nation. I, uh, as I say, spoke to President Magana about the things that are of concern, and I know that many up in the hill uh, with regard to the progress that they're making. And regarding the Bolins of Blocky bill, I think its passage would effectively turn Nicaragua into a sanctuary protected from all interdiction efforts. Now, the bill's correct in its findings can be helpful in uniting the American people to understand the threat. Nicaragua is the major transit point for arms sent to Cuba, and uh, I think there's probably some information <coughs> in these booklets that you have there. The Salvadoran guerrillas rely on sites in Nicaragua for communication, command, control, and, and logistics. And the operations in El Salvador by the FMLN are planned and sponsored or supported from Nicaragua. Guerrillas are trained there and in Cuba, but the conclusions and remedies proposed, I think, are woefully deficient. The contemplated overt program just can't work and I think would be incredibly expensive. Our first <coughs> look at that suggests that it would cost upward of $300 million the first year and $100 million in each subsequent years against ground movement alone. And we're preparing a new finding for submission to the appropriate House and Senate committees, which will allow funding for activities that are essential if we're to stop the spread of these communist-inspired insurgencies. I don't think I have to tell you, we've said it many times, and I still think it's true, we're really talking about our own serious national security interests in this whole situation down there. And uh, that's all for me because now I'm here to hear from you. So if you've been there. California, but again, you didn't stop and pick me up off the South Lawn like I asked you to. I'm guilty, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just want to congratulate you all. This has been a wonderful mission, and I'm sure as you know already, all of America was watching you and what you were accomplishing up there, and it was a first in many ways, one of which is the largest crew to ever go up, and I guess the first retrieval of a, a satellite. There's another first that uh, has been talked about incessantly, and I understand that Dr. Ride uh, wishes there wasn't so much talk about that. Well, Dr. Ride, let me just remind you that when we had lunch here at the White House before your flight, that uh, somebody said that sometimes the best man for a job was a woman. <laughs> and uh, in this particular instance, your handling of that long arm and that retrieval and all uh, did indicate you were there uh, for one reason. You were there because you were the best person for the job. And I think that sets a standard. It's going to be followed for men and women in the in the force from now on with these experiments. The people are picked uh, neither because of nor in spite of, but simply because, like all five of you, you are the best for this assignment. And uh, you've done so much, and to think that people as far away as Indonesia, which didn't look far away to you when you were going over, but, uh, but people that far away will have better telephone service because of what you've accomplished and what you did up there. It's just a, a most thrilling thing, and I can't tell you how much all of us appreciate it, but also how proud you've made everyone in America. 
Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yes, uh, we all do, Mr. President. As, uh, and I think maybe you indicated to us the other other day when we were having lunch that seven was um, a particularly uh, valuable number in your life. I think uh, you bestowed upon us some of the luck that uh, is associated with it. And as John Fabian indicated to you, it was a truly international mission, and it came off uh, from our standpoint as well as we could have asked. We would have liked to have landed this uh, Kennedy. We have lots of friends here at Edwards, and we're always uh, proud to come back. Uh, we were all honored to fly. I've got a fantastic crew, and uh, hopefully we'll all get a chance to do it again sometime. I think we proved that the Challenger and the, the Columbia before it is a super machine that can do many, many things for not only the United States, but for the people of the world. Well, there's no question about that. And uh, all five of you here, and very frankly and seriously, I am sorry that the people who were all waiting uh, down in Florida were disappointed uh, uh, at the fact that the, the landing had to be changed because of the weather. I guess still with all of our miracles, that's the one thing we haven't been able to overcome yet. No one could do anything about the weather. But uh, it didn't detract at all from your accomplishment. And uh, we know that you'll be flying again in future Columbias and Challengers. And you'll have the full cooperation that we can give to keep on with this magnificent work. God bless all five of you. Thank you for what you've done for the world. Thank, Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, back to your briefing. Debriefing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. President, I wanted to ask you if you have any comment about the uh, Carter Briefing Book matter uh, about your age and the letters. Um, no, I think there's much ado about nothing. The letters are going up there in explanation. That I myself would. Uh, like to get at the bottom of it. I had no knowledge of any such thing, and frankly, I don't think there ever was a briefing book yes. as such. Mr. Is there any merit in saying that it's strange, though, that nobody uh, from top to bottom in the staff remembers how the book, or the papers, whatever they were, got in the... Uh, I don't think it's an old page. Honestly, if you think about a campaign of hundreds of people involved and the reams of paper that are constantly coming in suggestions, proposals, reports, and so forth. Uh, look, ask me what paperwork came to my desk last week, and I couldn't tell you. Can I on the budget, budget resolution? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, budget, budget resolution? resolution? Thank you. Uh, you know how I feel about that. 